Hi everyone, my name's Mike and welcome to the channel. Today we are back again with A&D Motorcycles, um, our friends in Denby, North Wales, who uh, support us a lot on this channel. And we're looking at um, a couple of bikes again. So we're looking at the Royal Enfield Continental GT and the Moto Guzzi V7 Special. Uh, with the 850 engine, so it's the engine basically out of the, the uh, V85 TT. So these are modern classics. Um, I suppose you could link them back to their predecessors. So with the Royal Enfield, there was the uh, Continental 250, which was quite a, um, a cult bike of the 60s. I think it was the it was the British the quickest British 250, and the 650, which is the one we're taking out today, is a kind of a nod to that. And also the the V7 uh, 850. I suppose really it harks back to the T3 Moto Guzzi's from the 70s, which are bikes that we we love and. Um, um, a few of us have actually owned a few T3s in various forms over the years. So, um, as I said, I'd like to thank um, Sally and Richie at a and D. They're always very supportive of our channel. But I'd also like to mention Sam's Cafe, which is um, the cafe that's kind of part of a and um, but it's run by uh, some ladies there. There's a lady called Erica, who has actually put together a lemon drizzle cheesecake um, so if you go there um, make sure that you uh, have a, one of her cheesecakes and the food they put on is great you, I've got a picture of Stuart eating the breakfast there it's 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 lovely the, it, it's very uh, welcoming and hospitable it's a really nice place to stop so but they're surrounded by fantastic roads and it's a really good place to stop and have your lunch there. So, um, okay, so thank you guys um, for your ongoing support. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, hit the little bell, notification bell, because we have got some stuff coming up in the future. Um, with the 30th anniversary of the Honda Fireblade this year, um, Stuart, who's one of our members who you'll see in this video, has actually got a really nice example of a Mark II Fireblade from 97, I think it is. So um, I'm having that for a few days, so I'm going to you know, do a film on that. Uh, we've also got a Harley Davidson Fat Bob, um, Fat Boy, Fat Boy Grey Ghost. Uh, which is a limited edition one of those so that's coming out and I've still got to do that 750 Honda it's just a case of getting all the stars to align um, and yeah we've got plenty of other stuff we've actually got more bikes to video than we have got time at the moment so yes thanks a lot for your support and um, with that on with the show So we're back here, the Lemon Drizzle Gang are back at AMD Motorcycles and today we are going to be riding two fine steeds. We're going to be riding the Inter Continental GT, I nearly said Interceptor, <laughs> mechanically the same isn't it Richie? Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. But mechanical. it's the Continental GT, I've had this as a lone bike when they were servicing my Dutty 850. And that actual bike? That actual bike. Yeah, excellent. Yes, me and beautiful marriage in the Nanty Garth Pass. And this lovely bike, which is, I've been waiting to ride this. This is the Guzzy V7 Special with the 850 engine at the V85 TT, my bike. Slightly detuned, but um, Richie will tell us a little bit about that. So, we've got the V7 Special. As you say, it's now got the 850 engine, which was originally in the V85 TT. Um, it's now been remastered for the V7 in its two variants, the Special and the Stone. Um, the special comes with analog clocks because they asked their customers what they wanted on the special. Yeah. So the feedback was they wanted old school. Yeah. The analog clocks, as you opposed to the TFT. To you've the got TFT on the um, eight, the eighty-five, 85 yeah. or on the stone, it comes with a digital oh, clock. Yeah. 
and on this it comes with the old school headlight yeah. and an LED tail light whereas the stone comes with LEDs all around. Yeah and it's got the little guzzy wing thing it's on the front the as well like the V85. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a bit, little bit more trad and yeah. a little bit more chrome as well I think. Yeah yeah you've got some more bling if you want to call it that, some chrome accents yeah. on it as well. Chrome um, accents, I like that, I like that. So yeah. Cracking that up, and that we've got all good to ride around. And we've got a slightly different paint job. We've got a nice blue and silver. You get the um, the dark blue with the silver trim. Where I think the stone just comes in a single it, got, flat colour. Yeah, it's it? more flat colour. You've got yellow, uh, yellow and black. Um, oh, and the silver. Sorry, comes okay, in the silver as cool. well. But mechanically, so they're identical. Mechanically identical bikes. Okay. There's no difference whatsoever. Okay. So, so it'd be really interesting contrasting and comparing this Richard, who's in the background there. Um, one of the LDG, he's got uh, an earlier, what year is yours Rich? Mine's 2014 or 15. 2015. Mark II. Mark II, okay. So it would be really interesting to compare. A little bit of extra power, a little bit extra weight. Does it feel good? Yeah, a little bit. Mind you, mine's mine's You'll probably find the torque's a lot better on this. Yeah, yeah. That's what I noticed between the two. Like the mid-range. Yeah, the mid-range. and you but have, it, yeah. To be fair, it's, it's all through the range on this one. Yeah. It's got a lot of torque on it compared to the old one. Because what we've got on these newer ones, we've got Hemi heads as opposed yeah. to the Heron heads on yeah. yours. Yeah. And we've got, ooh, titanium intake valves on ooh. these, just like the V8. Have you? I, I thought they only used on some of TT. Ah. No, it's the same, same engine. Yeah, it's just same motor. Yeah, yeah. Very good, Richie. And we're going to be riding this to compare. We've ridden, obviously, the Interceptor before. We did a feature on that. Um, but this is the, to use your words, a blinged up one a bit, <laughs> yeah. isn't it, Richie? Yeah, the blinged up version. And you've got it, some extras so. on this as well to make it even more blingy. Do you want to This is the Royal Enfield Continental GT Cafe Racer style. Um, we have fitted bar and mirrors, screen, the uh, pannier rails. Yep. Um, and obviously on this one you've got the twin 650 motor. Yeah. Um, good strong lump. Again, it's um, it's torque more yeah, than anything. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's a lot of people coming BHP, BHP. But it, it's torque. That's your friend out on the road at the moment. And these guys are absolutely perfect for the UK roads. And is this a standard seat or is this? A uh, no, sorry, that is the uh, extra aftermarket seat. seat. Yeah, yeah, with the seat pod. So that's yeah. a Royal yeah. Enfield aftermarket seat. Yeah, yeah. Royal Enfield yeah. branded. Yeah, uh, yeah, with the seat pod as well. And I must admit, riding this, and we'll talk about it at the end of the day when we have a little round table, but. I obviously rode the uh, Interceptor and then I had this as a lone bike for 24 hours so I took it through some of the lovely roads between here and back home to Shropshire so, and um, really enjoyed it and the weather was a bit kinder than when we were doing the Interceptor. How did you find the Nantagar? Because I used that every day it was for work. This was perfect yeah, in yeah. it because it didn't have too much power, like you said it had the torque yeah. and I had a great time on it. That and the horseshoe, okay the horseshoe passes 40 mile an hour. <laughs> but um, anyway, I really enjoyed it, so I'm going to be really interested in what the rest of the gang think of it. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Richie. Good. So, can we just, have, what sort of price are these? Oh, have yeah, you... sorry, price, Richie. So, these are 86 for these, and yeah. these are mid, mid to late fours. Okay, so we've uh, got sorry, a... no, mid to late fives, Five. actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. a big disparity, so we've got yeah. to bear that in mind when we compare them, I think. You know, as ever, we're going to be struggling, I think, with the Royal Enfield to find fault at the price point. Yeah. We? Without preempting. Yeah, you, you, to be fair. Yeah. You Whereas because he's a bit more of a premium sort of yeah. product. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's all the riding experience, it is, isn't it? it? Is, and yeah. the ownership yeah. of it's really good. opportunity to have one because I had this for a few days when we first put it on fleet. And I, I was going from here yeah. to um, Wrexham. Right. I think I had three days until just to get some miles on it. And that's why I asked about the Nantic Golf because I've. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, I've took this up the Nantic Golf, but I've took the Interceptor and this. And this was just, it was, it was just epic. It yeah. was just, it's a pleasure bike. It just makes you smile. Yeah. Nothing's ever threatening. Nothing's ever too much trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And you just, I don't know what you're like, but I just find I'm smiling yeah, yeah. underneath my heart. I've got a grin on my face. Well, it'd be interesting because I've just yeah. come through the Nantic Golf on my Centenario V85. Like you say, had a yeah, big grin yeah. on my face. Yeah. So really looking forward. They will guarantee both impression. Hundred percent. There we go. You can't get better than an A and Z guarantee. That's it. Thank you very much, Cheers, Richie, Richie. As always. You're Good to you later. Cheers, Thanks guys. A lot. See you soon.
Okay, so this is me, Mike, riding the bike now, and this is the V7. Um, well, it feels like a guzzy, it sounds like a guzzy, and it is actually quite a snappy little bike. Um, well, little, it's an 850, isn't it? But it, um, yeah, it kicks off well, it, um, it's, it's very, uh, lots of torque. When we first rode it, I rode it in the wet, and it, I didn't really get a good idea of it. But this second ride, you know, it's a lovely day, it's lovely roads, you know, the weather's nice. And I'm just rolling along and just using the, just using the torque. So, I think what I did the first time, because it was raining and I wanted to get back to the shop, I was, I was, I was trying to kind of rev it a bit too much. And um, even though they rev, you know, because he's rev, the strength of this bike is it's got a good chassis. Um, suspension wasn't fantastic, but that's probably because I'm a bit too big, you know, probably a bit too heavy for, for the, um, the springing on it. But the engine is just lovely. It's got that lovely flexibility. It's almost like an elastic. Um, anyone who's ridden a Guzzi will understand what I mean. It's almost like a an elastic, um, almost like an electric motor, the way that it, that, that it develops the torque. Um, but it sounds great, and uh, went round corn as well. Um, compared to Richard's V7, um, he's got a 750 version, it definitely felt it had more mid-range grunt. Um, Rich mentioned in, in the uh, conversation that um, he was expecting a bit more from it but on the second ride that I had I, I really did kind of get under the skin of the bike and it's all about and as Richie said when he was talking about it it's all about just kind of letting it roll and let it letting it roll through the corners and you can hear, you hear then you know I, I'm, I'm just you can hear the talk you, you can it, you know I'm not revving it at all and it's just excellent for it. So, charming bike, lovely charming bike. It's a very different animal to the um, the V85 TT. Um, the V85 TT is a much quicker bike, I think, and it encourages you more to use the engine. I don't know if this is a lower state of tune, but it certainly feels it compared to the to the V85 TT. But no, lovely bike. Um, I still think it's a bit physically small for me, but for someone who's probably about five foot eight or nine, it will be great size. Um, and it will be, you know, it's a lovely bike. It's got plenty of power for overtaking. So, uh, no, thoroughly enjoyed my ride on it. And uh, yeah, thank you very much A and D for uh, letting us ride these bikes. Okay, so now I'm on the Enfield. Um, what a chassis on this bike. It hasn't got the power of the um, the V7, but listen to it, listen to the sound it's making. And and the, the, the chassis developed by uh, Harris, uh, I think that bought, the Indian company bought Harris. And you can certainly tell. Um, we tested the Interceptor uh, last year, and I think the weather wasn't very good that day. Um, um, it didn't really strike me as, you know, it was a lovely, nice bike, but I didn't really fully appreciate how good it is. You know, the chassis, this has got the slightly lower bar, slightly rear set footrest, and it just seemed to suit the chassis. And, and we were talking on the Himalaya, saying that on these roads, the singles didn't really have the power to do what I've just done there. So. In terms of riding, if you could imagine all the fun that you get with the Himalayan and the Scram, but with that extra power, that's what this, that's what this uh, Continental does. And I'd imagine that's what the Interceptor would as well if we rode them again. But I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Um, it. It is a bit, it sounds fantastic on the video, but when you're riding it, it does sound a little bit quiet and it does feel a little bit strangled so I think my comments about um, 
putting a different set of pipes on it, uh, making it a bit more free flowing, and then maybe uh, doing a remap on it would make this a brilliant bike. Because it feels, I felt like I, you know, when I was attacking these corners, I felt like I was on a Dresda Triton. You know, it was 1959, and I'm on my way to the, uh, you know, the, heart, the busy bee cafe or whatever. It really feels like a cafe racer. Uh, and, and I think it would be just as lovely as, a, as the, um, you know, on the Interceptor format as well. But out of the two bikes, this one absolutely won my heart. I really liked it. I, I'm starting to really like these Royal Enfields. But, uh, you know, I, I really could see myself owning one of these. I think, I think with the Himalayan that we tested last time, I, I would struggle a bit for the, you know, the, the lack of the power. But this is brilliant you know it doesn't cost a lot of money it's light it's not you know overly heavy you know it, it, it's just fantastic bike so yeah thank you very much a and thank you sally thank you richie uh really enjoyed i think we all really enjoyed both of these bikes but for me uh, uh, you know for the price and everything in consideration I, I really like this i really like this continental Hi everyone, we're the Lemon Drizzle Gang and welcome to the latest video. Um, we've been out, we're at A&D Motorcycles again, same as we were in the last video. Uh, and it's been a nice day today until about an hour ago. And then it started absolutely pouring down. So we are in the cafe. What's it called? Sam's Cafe. We're in Sam's Cafe. Which is right next to A&D. And it's highly recommended. Highly recommended. Very good. Yeah, so um, yeah. Yes, so what we've been doing today is we've taken out a Motoguzzi V7 special, special, special which is 850 special. got the 850, and we've taken out a Royal Enfield 650 Continental, Continental GT. GT with the kind of Clubman, Clubman bars. bars and seat. Yeah. yeah. So, Mm. Does somebody want to? Rich, well, you're usually the one who <coughs> tells us the details. Yes. So, uh, worth noting before Richard gives us the details, Richard is the V7 Guzzi. Absolutely, model. and I'm a real Motor Guzzi file. Um, had lots of Motor Guzzis over the years. As have we all. Yeah, and I've got a V7 Mark II, which is about 2015. So previous generation, 750 rather than 850. So it's actually quite an interesting comparison. Some of you who've watched Lemon Drizzle Gang videos will know that uh, I actually, or we did a feature on it last year. So um, anyway, but it's not a standard one mine. It's, it's breathed on, it's got a Stornello arrow pipe and a beetle mat tune. So mine probably goes a bit better than a standard one. So uh, it is an interesting comparison with the new 850. So, in a nutshell, I think mine is quite a lot lighter, yeah. and it's a few extra horsepower than a standard one. So there wasn't a lot of difference in the Seemed a bit smaller to me as well. Mine, well, yeah, mine, yeah, yeah. 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 The, uh, the 750s oh, are a bit smaller. If you can hear a bike going round, I've, I've got some footage of it, it's a RS900 Kawasaki Before. with Delcovic pipes on it, which are exact replicas of the old Z900. I took, I took some footage, yeah. I might slot that in here. Okay, so, um, yes, so Dave, do you want to talk about the Enfield? Talk yeah, well, we always knew it was going to be an interesting comparison. Because I've borrowed already, it, didn't Yeah, you? I borrowed it, I took my Guzzy year to A&D. Sorry, before you start. Oh, you've had yours. I'm no, no. Lemon drizzle cake. 
anyway while the boys eat there. Yeah. So <laughs> no, I, I owned it. I had it for 24 hours. Um, took it home about 60 odd miles and and back. Um, and I I loved it. I loved the Continental GT because while we rode the um, Interceptor last year. That was sort of standard riding position. It was pretty crap weather when we did it. Yeah. It's been good weather today, as Mike said, and um, really enjoyed getting back on this sort of clubman racery sort yeah. of bike. It almost seemed like a different bike. It does me. almost seem like it, a different bike. That, however, so. that's what I said to you, didn't I? I said, if you've got an interceptor, you've got this bike under you mm. with, with, mm. with the right tweaking. So we so might have a bit of an because the weather was so bad when we took the interceptor out. I mean, I've time, just ridden yeah. it back in the rain, too, uh, mm. and it. it, it it was a bit of a slower ride, but it, it was still... And I think the, the interesting point that emerged while we were riding both bikes, and I think we all agree, and Keith, you said it, they are quite different, aren't they? Hmm. Yeah, profoundly different. I think if you want the sort of race that I'd like the Enfield is more to go for, and to me, the frame, I thought, was absolutely outstanding. It, it almost feels like an aftermarket frame. It could almost be something like a, a Dresda or a Matisse or something mm, that special. That hand is brilliant, isn't it? I mean, if I didn't know better, I'd say Percy Tate had had a hand yeah. in developing it. it. It is that good, I think. Well, Harris probably. Harris, have, yeah, yeah, they yeah. developed it. And, and it that, shows. That must be the same frame, though, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. <coughs> your, your interceptor's got that in yeah, it. Yeah, it has, yeah. yeah. And the suspension's so balanced, it's like comfort and handling yeah. really on a budget. It's summit, you know. It's um, I think you said you, the, you're slightly... Um, the weight distribution is probably different because of the way you sit it. Yeah. But that's achievable, you know. Yeah. You've got just... more weight over the front end. It makes it more planted. Uh, it was fantastic, I thought, the suspension. So did yeah. we all yeah. prefer the handling of the Royal Enfield to the Guzzle? I, th I think they've got the ergonomics so. on that. Absolutely on spot Enfield. on on the Enfield. You know, you've got the rear sets that mm -hmm. absolutely complement mm -hmm. handlebars. Mm -hmm. And you feel right on that bike. Right. How tall are you? Six foot. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm dead sorry. six foot. Yeah. So it, well, I'm it felt great. A bit shorter than that, and it felt fine with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, Trump, uh, on the other side, I got onto the V7 because uh, I rode the Anfield first, and now I rode the V7, and I went straight into that <laughs> mode on, on the V7. Punch back. Punch it? back, yeah. I would say something about monkey on a barrel. Monkey on a thing, yeah. yes. Barrel. Barrel. I don't know, so, if, you, if you look at the footage, did you look good on it? Did, did, yeah, I, I didn't yeah feel no, like you I looked great. Good I mean, Keith was nearly as tall as you, or yeah. about as tall. Um, we were chatting, me and Rich, and you came past on it, Actually, and I said, you, doesn't it look good? Your, your riding today was outstanding, I must say. You were the most entertaining person to watch. Well, I kept it on the road most of the time. <laughs> yeah. I, was out, what that means. I was outstanding in the field. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there, we'll cut that bit out. Um, yeah, no, so... <laughs> So I like the Guzzy as I always do and I was really looking forward to riding it and I rode Richard's just before it and as Richard has said, he's just got a few aftermarket bits so it's got a nicer exhaust now. But I thought it is a bit quicker than yours, Rich. It's a bit deceptive. I, I, I think it is a bit quicker. Yeah. It's certainly I'm, got more mid-range. Yeah, definitely in the mid-range, which both, as Richie says in the intro, both these bikes are really about the mid-range. Yeah, you know, yeah. They are. You ride them. And on the roads we were on today, yeah. Like we said with the Scram and the Himalayan, suit these bikes perfectly. You wouldn't want anything bigger. No, this, this this is a, the the next thing up from Scram and the Himalayan. Well, Scram, Scram and the Himalayan are great until you met a car. Yeah. Like I met a couple of trucks on yeah. both of these, and he just got the power. You can just blast yeah. past them. Yeah. Even though I did find the rev limiter on one of the bikes. But and, and that's my experience with the Intercept, sorry, the Continental riding home on it. I had to do you know a sixty mile journey. You're going to do overtakes. And it didn't get hampered yeah. once, you know, it's mm. got them, yeah. you've got to rev it a bit, but, um, you know, it'll do but it. But jumping, jumping straight back, straight off the Enfield and onto the Guzzy, what struck me was how much snappier the Guzzy felt. Yeah. You know, it's got that, mm, you yeah. jump on it, open the throttle and whoop. I mean, it's got whoop. an extra 200cc. Yeah, so you can feel that. Yeah. But for a riding experience, I really enjoyed the Enfield. Yeah, mm. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the, the bigger engine on the, the Guzzy, they've hidden it really well because, like you said, it used to be their big bike. Mm. It feels that it felt very much like the Scram when you were turning it around. Yeah, yeah it was very you know, wheeled. Uh, you know, and th things like that where we, we took it for the beauty shots we were on the ground. Mm. You know, it's easy to move around, which is quite surprising. Mm. Didn't like the gear lever. It's got a, it's got a kick in the gear lever that I kept, kept thinking was the end of the gear lever. Wow. 
I didn't. Well, so like a kink. Yeah, so it kinks out. I looked down. I thought, I don't really know what it's kinked to do. What and size left foot have you got? Yeah, the, but, the, but I'm a leather, so they're obviously big feet, and that's oh. what I thought. First of all, I thought, is it a short gear lever? Well, I had to sort of ride like a duck, you know, like ten to two mm -hmm. with my feet. Kinky so, boots. So, and so I didn't really. That, that was the only thing that that was one of the things that put me off. The sound. It's a bit. It's, it's not as good. The Enfield sound was better. Yeah, it was surprising. I, I when they rode past, I liked the sound of the guzzy. Riding them, I preferred the sound of the Enfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah on the guzzy, just. Uh, but you are tending to rev the Enfield more because yeah. if you're riding them at similar speeds, mm. you are working and, the Enfield. And you want to hear that noise. Yeah. yeah. But it was the other thing with the guzzy was when you did change gear, it had this. You know, when you play bowls and the bowls clack each other, yeah. it's got that sound, doesn't it? You know, yeah. and it, it, like I said to you, it doesn't want to be rushed. It's sort of, you know, if you're like, it doesn't like it. It's like the it. only non guzzy Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I didn't have. So a we're all looking yeah. at each other while we're actually. So, so, so I, I, you know, when you sort of like wind it up, click, you know, yeah. very, everything very deliberate, like when you ride in there. The square four sort of thing. I, I think I think you've got to put that comment into context with guzzies. You know, yeah. if you go back a couple of generations, if you go back to something yeah. like the Mark One Le Mans, yeah. that was an agricultural tractor type gearbox. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I've got a V11 Sport, so you're back up to about year 2000. That was a substantially better gearbox. Yeah. Yeah. Now this one. I would suggest personally, yeah. it's a fabulous gear. It all depends sure. where okay. you, what your terms of reference are. Yes, no, exactly. And it's just so. put it into context of Guzzi. And, and, and even compared to mine, a, a Mark II 750 V7 from you know, only seven years uh, old, and it's markedly better. It's a lot far more sophisticated and, and bike. You said it's a much more refined bike. Lighter clutch. Is that a yeah. hydraulic clutch on No, it's cable, but it's a lot lighter. I think yeah. what I... I have to do is recalibrate myself so that you can just like open it, you know, do everything deliberately. But like I said, it's a lazy bike. When you look down, you're still doing the yeah, speed, yeah, you so are, you, yeah. you don't have to be frantic. No. You can lay back and just do it nice and. I, which I would imagine if you're riding it. I found distance. riding it, the Enfield, funnily enough, felt a bit more modern. Yeah, but, yeah. The, but the guzzy felt more classic. Yeah, mm -hmm. and whether that's subliminal with uh, heritage. As what well. I like sitting on the guzzy, riding along, look down, and it's got that. You could be on a Triumph, you could be on a Norton, you could be on a mm -hmm. T3. It's got that. It's got. Out there. It's <laughs> what's sticking out, and it's also that. You know where the tank finishes yeah, the and the head job, start. Yeah, and, and, and they've worked all that up. Mm. As we always say with the Enfields, they're really well finished for the price. There's nothing on them that looks cheap and cheerful. Really nice. You look at the Guzzy and you can see it's a step up. And it needs to be with the price difference, doesn't uh, it? Excuse me a minute. Yeah, um, uh, he refused lemon drizzle cake and he's eating No, he's flat no. Jack. Oh, he'd had the lemon drizzle cake before he's Oh, was that you that had it? You have that one? I mean, it's worth mentioning the prices, isn't it? Yeah. Just so we can be analytical. And uh, the Continental GT was about 6.1, yep. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas that V7 Special was about 8.5, 8.6. Yeah, to be fair, that 6.1, you've got to add the extras like the seat. Yeah, you know and that particular one. Yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. that we've been looking at. Uh, Richard but in goes round terms. Yeah you're looking at getting on half as much again yeah. for the Motor Guzzi V7 so, as the Enfield, which is 50% more. Segways nicely into the bombshell Richard told me. Which would you choose? Yeah. Well, actually, I, I was really surprised today because, as I said before, I love Motor Guzzi's and I didn't really have any preconceived ideas uh, about the 850 over the 750 and whether it was going to be a lot better and a lot punchier and a lot faster. But actually, I came away preferring my 750. Uh, I think it's more fun to ride. It's not in the equation, it's either the yeah. So, uh, yeah. um, yeah. so, that's good, that's so good, I was That's moderately... good news for your good lady wife, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So you're not going to so, trade up. <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah. I was actually slightly underwhelmed with the V7 850, mm -hmm. slightly disappointed. Uh, and yet the Continental GT exceeded my expectations and I actually preferred riding it. Yeah. And irrespective of the price. Irrespective of the price. And yeah. this is Richard talking. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, th I, I thought the Enfield was an absolutely astonishing value for money. Yeah. I mean, it genuinely handles really well. I, I, I think you've got to look at it though. We, we've had a shortish test ride today. 
And as good as the Enfield is, um, it's still only a 47 48 horsepower bike. Now, there's, yeah. there's no problem with that. But the Gussie is quoted as about 64 as a comparison. And for me, I think long term, I feel I could bond with that Gussie long term as an owner. Far, I, I love the Enfield in terms of handling short term, but all of us are going to play around with the bikes, we're going to make additions to them. I, I think the Guzzi has got questionable suspension and standard. I think you'd want to upgrade it. It's that. all right, but it's not I think you might. I think you might. Because we're a bit heavier, the three of us are proper sized humans. I found the same, it was a bit but those, Yeah, but the athletes among us, Richard and myself, obviously, <laughs> you know, uh, we got the most of the performance. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so, so were you saying long term you might air towards the guzzle? I, I certainly would, yeah. I, I think it needs a few minor improvements, which is embarrassing. Do you know what I would do? Go on. I would buy the stone, because I quite like the copper coloured yeah. flat paint one. Which saves I like about that one too. Yeah, and they're yeah. about how much cheaper are they, Rich? About a grand cheaper? Six, seven hundred, I think. I'd sling on a good, better pair of shocks, a nice set of pipes, yeah. and I'd go with the stone over either that one or the Continental. Really? I like the Continental. You've, you've summed it up beautifully in terms of. Yep. I like the Enfield, it doesn't like me. <laughs> well, like you said, it's put 47 brake horsepower, you'll get into trouble. Yeah. It can do. Okay. So you're going with the Enfield? Yeah. yeah. I, from I, I reckon I could go around Spain on that. Yeah, yeah, of course you could. Of course you could. Oh, yeah. I mean, the only thing I would say, being totally objective and not just about riding pleasure, you do get some uh, oh, good Bear, features oh, with, go. with oh. Moto Guzzi. You've got a, a far better fuel range. It's a 21 litre tank or something compared to yeah. sort of 15 litres, so you can probably go 50% further. I hate filling up the pack, hate of mine. And shaft drive as well, you're not going to be fiddling yeah, around your chain. So you have to wait to put that in. And they're the probably as economical as each other. Yeah. Mike. Okay, well, so me, yeah. you've, you've asked me. Yeah, what Okay, well, that's, that's interesting because I like the Guzzi, I like all Guzzies. It's too small for me. If I was going to spend that amount of money on a Guzzi, mm. I would buy a big block. You know, I would buy another Griso. Yeah. Um, it felt physically too small for me. Um, it's a lot cheaper than, than a Greaser, new, new, you know. Oh, new, new, but yeah. I would buy a second I know, one. I know. But the, the thing with that is that you, you're going back to the big heavy bike. I, I made exactly. my had one and it fell, it fell over on the... Really? On the side. Yeah, oh, probably, oh, so yeah. And that's the thing is, you're not going to get under that. With that, I felt that yeah. I was quite happy but to speak. Really but the Enfield, I thought, was really nice. I liked it. It made me feel like... Um, yeah, one of the ton up boys. Um, I just liked it. It was, but what I didn't like about it is it felt a bit flat. It felt a bit Euro, Euro five emissioned. Um, so if I bought one of those, I'd like to do whatever you do for remapping. Put some nice pipes on it, open it up, get it breathing right, and get it sounding nice. And I reckon you'd have a cracker. But of like, course, there's somebody who does. Is it an eight six five kit for yes. them? The big ball kit, which yeah, meant I don't to know. Be I incredible. don't know if I'd want to do that because I think you'd then start spending a disproportionate money for what you cost. And also, I think the rest of the, it, it would unbalance it. It would unbalance yes. it a bit. And All right. Thank you very so much. So thank you very much, ladies, for holding you up. Yeah. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Yeah. See you later.